Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we are taking a look at an upcoming sub simulator, Silent Depth 2 Pacific. Now, I was sent a key for this game by Microprose, the studio behind it. Microprose is a studio that focuses on military sims and strategy games. Silent Depth 2 falls into that first category. Microprose describes it as an entry-level submarine sim light. Bit of a bit of a mouthful there. But anyway, the game is set in the Pacific Theater of World War II. It's essentially a spiritual successor to Silent Service, which was a 1985 sub-simulator, which I didn't know that was a thing back in the day. But anyway, the game was recently released into early access on Steam, back on July 16th, so do keep that in mind that it is an early access title as we go through it. Now, while I haven't played Silent Service, or the first Silent Depth, I of course do enjoy my naval combat games, and was interested in checking it out, and figured you guys would be too. So, how do you start out the game? Well, you start out on board your own Gato class sub, setting out from mid midway to patrol your designated patrol areas via the map screen. You click on a certain coordinate on the map, your submarine sails to it, and along the way you can run across the various Japanese fleets. Some large, some small, some in between. There's some pretty good variety between what you can run across. Now, it is very much an arcade game because sometimes you can run into like three yammies that are right off the coast of Midway, so there's that. But anyway, once you run across a Japanese fleet, you'll need to approach the enemy fleet undetected and do what damage you can. At first, the controls seem a bit overwhelming to me, but after a few encounters, I had the hang of it down pretty well, and they're overall fairly simple once you get used to it and straightforward. Everything you need is on screen and can be interacted with by using the mouse. There's no need to memorize any hotkeys or anything, although they do exist if you do wish to use those instead of simply clicking on the controls on screen. You control your speed and heading by clicking on the gauges along with your depth, Aiming is pretty straightforward and simple. By looking at a target via the periscope or binoculars, you'll see a yellow icon appear above their head. And at that point, you can launch your torpedo while you're looking at that particular target, and your torpedoes will travel toward that target. I believe it is essentially, you know, you're the captain and you're telling the crew what target you wish to uh, launch a torpedo at. They're doing all the heavy lifting for you. You click the button, your torpedo launches, and hopefully it'll impact the target. And of course, you can, you know, launch as many torpedoes as you want out of your forward tubes, as long as you have them loaded into your tubes. And you can try to blast three or four ships at a time. It's pretty, pretty fun trying to get those multiple hits going on at the same time. So, while it does claim to be a simulator light, it is pretty arcadey because unlike some other submarine games, you don't have to worry about trying to track the heading and speed of your target. All you have to do is look at a target, fire the torpedo, and there you go. So, the controls I would say are more, you know, simulator-y because, you know, the submarine does go a realistic speed. It only goes like 12 knots underwater, 22 on the surface, and it does handle much more realistic than, well, submarines and water warships. It is most definitely arcadey and pretty simple when it comes to the combat side of things. So besides torpedoes, you can also man the deck gun to potentially finish off targets if you don't want to waste any more torpedoes because you do only get uh, 10 torpedoes in the front and I believe 6 in the back. So torpedoes are pretty scarce and you do need to conserve them for when you have you know, more valuable targets. So if you see something like a gunboat all by its lonesome, you can surface, man the deck gun, and finish him off. So after you've expended your ammo, fuel, or if your submarine's been damaged while you've been out and about, you'll need to return to Midway where your sub will be repaired and refueled. There are also weather effects like rain, rough seas, and such that can, of course, affect visibility. So that's a nice little mix-up in there. As far as the gameplay loop goes, it's pretty straightforward at this moment. You sail into, into the Pacific, try to sink as many Japanese ships as, ships as possible, return to port, rinse, wash, and repeat. After playing for just an hour or so, I felt pretty comfortable with the gameplay. And short of surfacing next to the Japanese ships, or getting ran over by the Yamato, it's not overly difficult to simply not die in this game. 
And if you do get spotted by the Japanese ships, they'll launch flares and charge your positions with their destroyers or their cruisers. Or really, at this point, any ship seems to just absolutely bull rush you if it isn't something like a supply ship, cargo ship, or an oil tanker. Now, once the enemy ships do get it over you, if they have Hydra, which so far it seems like that's just the, the destroyers, they'll start pinging your position with active Hydra and start dropping depth charges on top of your head or where they think you're at. In order to, of course, counter this, you have to dive deep and try to slink out of their search area at like, you know, one third speed, trying to stay quiet and all that jazz. If you do receive damage, your crew will automatically repair it if they can, because some repairs do require you to return to port, like if your conning tower gets damaged. But some repairs, like your batteries and electric engines and torpedo tubes, those seem like your crew can fix those. So, again, pretty simple. You don't need to do anything. The crew does it all automatically, from what I've been able to tell with the hours that I've spent with the game so far. Now, the game is very much not difficult. It is very much an entry-level submarine sim light, as they do describe it. Which, if you're looking for something that's simple, that you can pick up, play for a couple hours, and then put back down without having to remember, you know, how the simulator works or anything like that, this is most definitely it. If you're looking for something more akin to Silent Hunter, this is not it. And I think this last game of the Silent Hunter series came out in, what, 2010? So I can understand why so many might be rushing to this game thinking that it's a Silent Hunter uh, successor. It is not. It is definitely not that. The game is pretty bare bones at the moment with just the war patrol missions available and that, again, you go out, patrol your little grid, run into a fleet, try to sink them, and try to get away. That's pretty much all you have at the moment. So it does get repetitive pretty quickly. Also, the enemy AI is just not fantastic at all. Enemy ships crash into each other. They don't really seem to take any type of drastic action, even if I, like, nuke their Yamato-class battleship off the face of the ocean. They just kind of stand around. Sometimes they'll try to turn and run. Sometimes they don't. It seems to be kind of hit or miss right now. So, yeah. But I did have fun and enjoy myself with the time I spent with the game, even getting jump-scared by uh, Yamato at one point. So I do believe there's plenty of potential here, because the basics are solid. According to Microprose, more mission types are in the works, along with some other additions, uh, some graphical upgrades to the torpedo uh, streaks and such, which I didn't even see any yet at all when I was playing the game. Plus, considering that the game is currently listed for a whopping $13 on Steam, it's a pretty good deal for what's there. I mean, $13, you can't really get much of anything for $13 bucks to get, uh, today, and again, it's an early access game, and it's not meant to be Silent Hunt or Light, it's just, a, I don't, I'm not even sure you could really call it a submarine sim, you know, maybe because it's in the vein of of um, Silent Service, where, you know, it's, it's, it's essentially a, a modern take on a 1980s 16-bit sub game, so if you take it from that approach and look at it, it is what it says it is. I mean, in all the um, articles and such I've read about it, you know, they mentioned several times that it's essentially meant to be a modern silent service. And if you go look at gameplay of that game back from the 80s, you can see, oh yeah, that this is literally that game with just modern graphics and, you know, you can run in 4K and all that jazz. So overall, if you like what you've seen in the background, I think it's worth checking out. Again, it costs less than like a, a, a Big Mac meal from McDonald's. I do think that it's worth keeping an eye on, even if you aren't overly impressed with what's been playing in the background so far. Um, either way, I think it's a good starting point for the game, and I'm eager to see how it does progress. It, it's pretty arcadey. I mean, it's really easy, like I said, to just sit down, play the game for you know an hour or two, then you can walk away from it. You don't have to remember, remember any hotkeys or any bindings or anything, because you can just simply use the mouse to click with to click on the gauges and interact with everything that you need to interact with on the screen. And it's nothing to sit down for an hour and you know knock two or three missions out, 
go back to your base and again wrench wash and repeat at the moment so hopefully with the time that will be spent on this game we'll get some new modes some um, improvements to the game the game is pretty i wouldn't say buggy but it seems like the torpedoes sometimes they reload sometimes they don't there isn't a tutorial at the moment so you just kind of are left to figure things out on your own for the time being. So that can be a little confusing when it comes to some things like, hey, these torpedoes, why are they taking so long to reload? Do I click on the buttons to have them uh, be reloaded? Because it makes a sound when I click on them when the, uh, when the torpedo light isn't on. And then it looks like they get reloaded afterwards, or is that just the game being buggy? So that is, you know, kind of a hurdle that they do have to overcome, hopefully, in the future. But, you know, with a proper tutorial and stuff, hopefully being one of the things that they do next, the game will become, you know, even more simple. But again, it, it, it is really simple once you get it down and very arcadey. So, again, if you're looking for an arcadey submarine, uh, sub submarine game that's kind of simulatory, I think this could potentially be a pretty big hit once again they get some more content added to it. But anyway, guys, that's Silent Depth 2 Pacific. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday, wonderful rest of your week. And hope to catch you guys in the next one.